I'm thrilled to be joined now by Dr. Jose Pomar. Dr. Pomar is a very well-known cardiac surgeon from Barcelona. He's also president of the European Association of Cardiothoracic Surgeons. Thank you so much for joining Thank you me. very much. It's good to see you, you again. Good to see you and good to learn from you at this meeting. You know, you, um, the conclave is a very interesting meeting. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's a really fantastic meeting. Uh, I have to say that coming from Europe, where most of the techniques were born in the right. past. Uh, for us, it's a little bit of a, a strange situation because we have to come here to the States to learn more and more. And then, and I think this conclave is a unique meeting. And I think it's uh, all of us from Europe who realize, and that's maybe the reason why we have about 50% of the right. attendees coming from there. Uh, we realized it was a very well organized meeting and uh, an excellent uh, meeting to come here every two years. Well, I mean, it's it's fabulous. The, you know, not only are half, more than half of the participants from Europe, but we have people worldwide. So, I mean, it Absolutely. it really is a is a melding of uh, lots of intelligence and lots of minds. So, is the approach since you referenced the fact that a lot of this did begin in Europe, and we've certainly learned and benefited from your knowledge, is the approach to mitral valve surgery now becoming more standardized in Europe? Uh, I do think so. It has been a few surveys in the States and in Europe showing that we were not doing as many repairs as we, we thought it was going to be the real thing. And uh, But in fact, it's increasing. I think today any cardiac surgeon has to be able to repair a P2 prolapse, and this is something that has been the routine, it has to be the routine for all of them. And um, I believe that we have a lot of things to learn, that's why we are here, but at the same time we have many things we already have as a standard in, in the care of the patients. The, and, I, and I think you're exactly right. The, the question, certainly you've been, a, been very um, um, key in education and teaching your colleagues and making sure we all learn. How do we go about educating the cardiac surgeons and the cardiologists? That, that's a great question. First, because I'm a believer that we have to get together, cardiologists and surgeons. Uh, I don't know how is that going to happen, but we have to merge and we have to have a, a unique discipline of cardiovascular diseases. And uh, we have to think the patient is the most important thing, Absolutely. not being a surgeon or cardiologist. The second thing is that the, the volumes. Uh, we cannot do this type of surgery uh, in any single center. We need to have like a subspecialty where centers are focusing on this type of repairs and they have they need to have enough volume to be able to teach the techniques otherwise not going to work so we need to do the two things one to get together with the cardiologist which is not always very easy right. and the second one to get the uh, referrals in uh, very uh, specific centers with an excellence in this type of repairs. No, you're absolutely right. The, what about, I'm going to come back to that in just a second, but one more thing. You know, we live in an, in an information age. Everybody's got their phones, their mobile apps. What about educating patients as to what they need to know or think about? Is this, is this becoming prominent in Europe? Uh, unfortunately not. I'm, I must say that here in the state you use much more the the media. Right. You use a lot also the applications and the iPhones on, on the, the the Androids and all these systems. Uh, we are starting slowly, but probably we are still a few years uh, behind you. And I think this is going to be, I would say, is essential because at the end, as I said before, the patient is the most important part of the whole thing and they need to know the possibilities of and the advantages of repairing a valve or not, and uh, they, they have to decide with the surgeon and the cardiologist what, type of, what the type of treatment is going to be for him. Tremendous emphasis in this country about patient-centered care, but patient-centered education, and, and so, I, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, I think we need the excellent surgeons and cardiologists educating the patient, not so much to have the patient come directly to them, but bringing the level of knowledge up. Well, let's go back to the, the final thing is the, the cardiologist and the surgeon, mm -hmm. because it's very interesting. I mean, I, one of the things that strikes me is I wish many of my cardiology colleagues could be here and learn and see things, because I don't think the cardiologists are very knowledgeable about what 
the surgeon is doing. The, 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 the cardiologists, we are working with mainly with the echocardiographers, echo. and we have them in the operating room. It's like a, another brother of the, right, of right. the team, and we need to do it. Uh, but it's true that the clinical cardiologists, very often they are not aware of what uh, exactly we are doing, how we do that. And it is very important because surgeons, you know, for many years we had a different behavior of cardiologists. And some surgeons may feel that whatever I do, the way I repair a valve, if I can say I have repaired the valve, this is the best for the patient. And perhaps sometimes it's only the best for him. Right. Uh, some right. patients, they do not deserve to have thousands of stitches there just to say it doesn't leak. In time, it's not going to work. So it, playing cardiology with a, a different mentality and surgeons and explaining a patient who knows about, I think this is the best thing. It, uh, and it, thank you very much. That's excellent. You know, the, the, we, we in the States always learn tremendously from our colleagues in Europe. And, we, and I know you have very close relationships with colleagues around the world. And thank you for educating us and continuing to push the field forward. We always learn from you too. Good to see thank you. you. Thank you very you, much. Jose.